the book of Psalms, in Psalm 19. I'm going to look at some things this morning that uh, I just love it. I, I've had uh, Brother Filbert, you know, at the house for several weeks, and uh, I was talking to him yesterday about this. And I said it's amazing when you are doing a, a study on a particular subject, topic, whatever it might be, you can go back through the Bible and you will find um, verses that you're familiar with that you didn't realize applied to what you're looking at now. That's because it's the Word of God. I mean, you couldn't do that with something man wrote. But uh, uh, as I was looking through this, I, I, I would be reminded of particular verses and I say, well, now this applies to this so well. Uh, that it gives us maybe even a broader understanding of, of what God's telling us. And I hope, uh, I hope this will help you. Uh, in Psalm 19, uh, what I want to look at this morning is this subject, truth over opinion. Truth over opinion. In Psalm 19 in verse 7, the Bible says this, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Notice verse 12. Who can understand his errors? Now, if, if, if God's asking us that question, it's telling us it's difficult for us to understand that we're wrong. We have a hard time with that. You know, we, we like ourselves a lot. And what we're going to look at this morning is we like our opinions a lot. And how can we tell when we're wrong? Well, the Bible says to cleanse thou me from secret faults. So there's some things that are about me that I don't even know. I don't even realize. These are secret things. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins... Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In verse, uh, verse 12, the Bible says, Who can understand his errors? Without the truth... We don't understand our faults. As a matter of fact, without the truth, we don't even think we have any. It's the truth that reveals those things to us so that we can understand. Our faults are actually a secret to us. Now, if you're here this morning and you, know, you say, well, I know when I did something wrong. How do you know that? There has to be a standard that tells you that. You don't, you, we don't come up with that on our own. As a matter of fact, what the Bible says about that, when we uh, come up with things on our own, it's what's right in our own eyes. That's a way of death. And we'll look at that a little bit this morning. But the, the thought here is, who can understand his errors? We need to understand some things, but we can't apart from the truth. Uh, that Bible that you're holding is, is very, very, very important to your life and the way you build your life. Because without it, you're going to build your life on your own opinion. And we see how that happens, how that turns out, don't we? See, a lot of people are doing that. As a matter of fact, the majority of the world does that. The majority of the world bases everything about their life on their own opinions about things. Now, they may have been taught certain things when they were growing up, and, and uh, they may have learned some things along the way. But apart from that which is true, that which is actual truth, we build our lives on a faulty premise. And it doesn't turn out well. 
Uh, in the book of Judges, chapter 17 and verse 6, the Bible says this, In those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Now, uh, by the way, the nation of Israel had a king. That's God. But they wanted a, a human king. They looked around and... and their opinion was that they saw every, all these other nations and they had a king and I guess they felt left out. The truth is, it was the other nations that, that was left out because the nation of Israel had the king as their king. But they wanted, now in this verse in Judges 17, 6, and it says, in those days there was no king in Israel. What this is talking about, there was no real authority over the people. Now, God is God, and God's never abdicated His throne. He, he'll always be God. He's always the king. But that doesn't mean that everybody follows Him, does it? And when this is talking about there was no king in Israel, they really had no authority except themselves, because it says, and every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Now, that's in Judges 17, 6. In, in 2 Chronicles 14, 2, listen to a contrast to that. It says, And Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord, his God. Now, we're, we're going to do one of two things. We're going to do that which is right in our own eyes, based on our own opinions and our own thinking, or we're going to do what we do based on what the Lord has said, which is good and right, and that we would do what, uh, and that would, that would be right in the eyes of the Lord our God. Now, which is it going to be? You say, well, if I go my own way, uh, I mean, yeah, I, I might turn out okay. Compared to what? You see, there's an interesting thing about opinion. Uh, one of my favorite opinions, now when I say favorite, is because I think it's so telling, that I've read in, in my lifetime was this. And there was a man by the name of Malcolm Forbes. He made this statement. He said, he that dies with the most toys wins. Now, isn't that interesting? In other words, if I can accumulate, and I'm going to use this term because I think it's really what it boils down to, if I can accumulate the most junk in my life, then when I've left this world, I'm a success. Oh, really? Maybe if this was all there was, you could say, well, they were pretty successful. But this is not all there is. What's going to happen next? See, Malcolm Forbes had to face the Lord. He'll have to give an account. And he based his whole life on his own opinion. Even to the point of death. He said, if I have the most toys, I'm, I'm, I'm a winner. Now, I found out that what most, hap most of the times happens in a situation like that, when a person dies, their kids fight over what they left behind. Their toys. It's, it's ridiculous. Opinions. Opinions. And by the way, you have one. I, don't even, I might not even know you. But you've got one. But what's your opinion based on? Is your opinion based on that which is right in your own eyes? Or have you been, as this verse, these verses in Psalms said, have you been enlightened to what the truth is and now your opinion is based on what's right? But you're going to do everything you do based on your opinion. Everything. If your opinion is that God is God and He's your Lord and you're going to follow Him, your opinion will lead you in the right direction. But we're talking about the opinion of those who have their own way of viewing this. And, and the Bible talks a lot about that. Uh, we ha we've seen it in the political arena, arena today. That opinion matters more than truth. Have you been, li have you been listening? So I'm sorry if you have. I mean, it's just, it's sad. It's sad. But they're, they're basing everything that they say on their opinions... And truth doesn't make any, di any difference. Even substantiated facts makes no difference to them. I mean, when you start pointing out things, that this, this, is the what, this is what happened, this is what happened, this is what happened, and this is what happened, and they look and say, well, you know, it really doesn't matter. That's their opinion. And it's going to be a sad day 
when America's ruled by an opinion. Yeah, that's about all politics I want to talk about. But it's, it's frightening about this kind of thinking if our opinion is not based on the truth. Then every one of our actions are going to be based on something other than truth. Now think about that. And how can you build a life that matters on a faulty premise on a personal opinion? You see, the majority of the world, now they can make all the claims that they would like, but the majority of the world bases the way they live their life on their own opinion. And they're going to get the result of that. You can't bypass the truth and expect to get a different result. You're not going to end up with a good result. Uh, the entire world system is built on a faulty premise. Now, I want to try to prove that to you. At the foundational core of worldly thinking is this. Man is the center of his own universe. That's the world's philosophy. I am my own God. I am my own authority. Uh, now, I will tell you this. In a certain way, you are your own authority because you're the one that must make the choice. That is, an, that is an authoritative position, I mean, that you have to make the choice. But what kind of choice are you going to make? Is it going to be the right one? Or is it going to be based on the opinion of just, this is, what, this is just what I think? Uh, maybe you've never heard anybody tell you this. I have, and it was a scary thing. I mean, it's a scary statement. I really don't care what the Bible says. I know what I think. I know what I believe. Now, I've heard that. You know. Uh, I mean, this, this is what Grandma told me, or Grandpa told me. And I know the Bible might say something different, but, but you know, I just believe that. Well, that's an opinion. And you're going to base your life on that. You, and if you go contrary to truth, if, if your truth uh, is just your opinion then everything you do is going to be based on that. And it's, and it's a faulty premise, and it's not going to end up well. Uh, man's opinion, even though it may change and vary, is the standard for each individual's life. That's one of the things I've always been... Well, a lot of things confuse me about that. But, uh, for example, Catholicism says this, that a pope is infallible. That means he cannot make a mistake. He cannot be wrong in religious, spiritual matters. Okay? Now, that's what they believe. If you'll study history just a little bit, you'll see that this pope was contradicted by the pope that followed him. In other words, the next one came along and said something contrary to what the first one said. Now, if the first one could not be wrong, and the second one is saying something different. Well, those things that are different are not the same, are they? There's something wrong with that. So what is it? Opinion. This pope had an opinion. It wasn't based in truth because truth doesn't change. It was based in opinion. This is my opinion about this. And then the next one comes along and says, no, this, this is this. And everyone that would come along would say, this is the law. This is the truth. This is the way that we're supposed to live. Now, that's confusing. I'm glad God doesn't change. Amen. I'm glad His Word doesn't change. Amen. But religion changes. And we're seeing that, I'll get to that in just a little bit, but we're seeing that in the world that we live right now. They are literally debating subjects that are crazy. Amen. Absolutely crazy. Is this right or not? And now they're not even saying that. Is this acceptable or not? Or can this be tolerated? Or not. What is all that based in? Opinion. Every bit of it. Amen. Not in truth. 
When the Bible talks about that the Word of God's forever settled in heaven, that means it's not debated there. It's not, it's not, it's not uh, contradicted there. But here, we know it's not settled here. It's, the truth is settled, but it's not settled in people's hearts because they have their own opinions about those things. So, uh, you and I live our lives based on our opinion. Now, I hope you have the right one. But if you do have the right one, it's going to be based in the Word of God and not what man says it says, but what God has said it says. All right? Uh, your opinion may be different from mine, but mine works for me and yours is wrong. You see, that's the way the world is. Uh, I, I was doing some research about this, and uh, <laughs> I hate to tell you where I did my research. I, mean, I did some re real deep, you know, philosophical research into this. I checked out sayings on T-shirts. That's what I did. You ready for some of these? Your opinion matters. Well, not to me, but I'm sure someone somewhere will care a little bit. That was on a t-shirt. That's pretty deep, isn't it? Yeah. I may be wrong, but it's highly unlikely. Uh, I know I should respect your opinion. This one was kind of harsh. I know I should respect your opinion, but I find that difficult since you're an idiot. This one said, of course I talk to myself. Sometimes I need expert advice. Now, we laugh at that, but that's exactly the way an opinion thinks. Uh, I could agree with you, but then both of us would be wrong. <laughs> uh, it's okay to disagree with me. I can't force you to be right. Now, I found this one inter interesting because it says an opinion is not an opinion. This t-shirt said evolution is not an option, uh, it's not an opinion, it's a fact. Now, what is that? Well, that's an opinion. Because in truth, it's not a fact. But my opinion has said... And I've been fed this so much that my opinion says, oh, evolution is right. It's, it's, it's not just an optional thing. It's not just an opinion. It's a fact. All right? Now, this was my favorite. I don't know where you got your opinion, but I hope you kept your receipt. I like that one. Because you need to turn that back in. You need, you, know, you need to take it back. All right. But that's, that's the thinking of what an opinion does. That's why it is so vitally important for us to get into the Word of God, because the Word of God is truth. Thy Word is truth. And truth needs to uh, become our opinion, because our opinion, or the, what we believe, is the basis upon which we live. Uh, our opinion really is preeminent in our lives. Why? Because we're, we're humans, and pride is an inherent character trait of mankind. Now, you say, well, well, I'm not prideful at all. Well, if I told you something from the Bible and you disagreed with me, and you disagreed with what the Bible says, that's pride. Now, you might not claim you have pride. That's your opinion. But truth is, all of us have a problem with pride. Uh, and pride is a character trait of mankind. Thinking can be found in varying degrees about these different things, but we all have a natural tendency to gravitate in that direction. Uh, sometimes maybe we've learned to kind of back off a little bit, or but if somebody pushes us hard enough, boy, we'll just you know, buck up. And, and now I think you should earnestly contend for the faith, but see, the faith is truth. But that's not what I find happening. A lot of times I, I find people are earnestly contending for their opinions. 
Man, that's, that's a sad thing because it's just, it's just not, it's a faulty idea that we're basing it on. Now, uh, uh, Jesus describes this in Matthew chapter 7. Let me just read this to you and, and we'll make some comments about that. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. All right? In other words, if you, if you heard what Jesus said and you did it, you believed it. What he had said to you might be contrary to what you believed before that, but now that you heard that and you believe that, now you're going to practice that. Okay? So that's what he's talking about. He said, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man. How is it possible for you and I to be wise? We have to know the truth. We have to believe the truth. It's the only way we'll ever be wise. Because our opinions are not wise. Right? He, uh, to a wise man which built his house upon a rock. What's the rock? Well, we know the rock is Jesus. And Jesus is the truth. And we also are, should be building our lives upon what the Word of God says is the truth. That's the foundation that we build on. That's a wise man that does that. And what happens? The rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not. Why? For it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, what have they done? They've heard the truth, but they've held on to their own opinion. I mean, when you tell somebody about Jesus and they look at you and say, well, that's just not for me. Or they might even say, I'm not ready for that yet. Or maybe not now. Or whatever it might be. I mean, that's what happened when Paul went to Mars Hill. There were some that believed. There were some that mocked. And there were some that said, later. We'll consider this later. Interesting thing, that was three categories of people, but it was only really two. Those that believed and those that did not. Because later is not guaranteed to anybody. But here's, the, here's what they were doing. They were basing it upon their own opinion. And those that hear the word of God, hear the truth, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man. Now what's a foolish man? Well, the very root of that word foolish is fool. And the Bible tells us clearly who is a fool. It's a man that does not believe there's a God. In other words, they do not believe the truth. So that's a foolish man. So if they, don't, if they don't believe in the truth of God, what are they believing? Their own opinion. Their own opinion. Do you understand why when the Bible talks about a straight gate and a, and a broad way? And if you'll, if you'll look up that word straight, S-T-R-A-I-T, not G-H-T. Straight is the idea of a very narrow passageway that you cannot really move from side to side. You have to, it, it, it closes you in. In other words, there's only one way. There's a straight gate. But there's a broad way. And if you'll, if you'll just listen to people, just talk to about you know, 15 to 20 people. And within the co uh, uh, course of that conversation... You're liable to get 15 or 20 different opinions about things. What is that telling you? Broad. All kinds of ideas, all kinds of opinions, all kinds of things to think about. But there's only one right way. You say, well, I don't believe that. That's your opinion. But it's still true. That, that uh, we were talking about t-shirts a while ago, that bumper sticker that you used to see, God said it and I believe it and that settles it. Nope, 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 nope. God said it, that settles it. Now, it needs to be settled for you, but it's already settled. It's already the truth. Whether you believe it or not, by the way, doesn't change the settling of it. It's still true. We need to believe that which is right. So, uh, the foolish man, he built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. You build your life on opinion, it's a faulty premise, and your life is going to fall apart. And I want you to know the devil feeds on your opinion. He wants to... Listen, he really doesn't care what opinion you have as long as he can convince you not to believe the truth. But he wants you to believe the opinion. 
And he'll throw out all kinds of things at you. Amen. You know, there's some things that maybe appeal to you that don't appeal to me. All right? So the devil really doesn't throw those things at me that don't appeal to me. He wants to throw something else at me. I mean, you know my background. I went to get a, a, a haircut yesterday. And uh, Nancy found some kind of coupon thing or something. And it was real cheap, and I liked that. So I went and got a haircut. And I'm sitting there listening to music that I knew far too well. Y'all know my background. Far too well. Now, I hope you'll forgive me. But just because I got saved doesn't mean that that doesn't appeal to me. I still have the same nature. I just have a new one as well. But that old nature still loves that stuff and still knows it. And what amazes me sometimes is I can remember that better than I can what I ought to be remembering. Amen. Now, if... Uh, I don't know, if, if, if I'd gone to the barbershop, or would I, it's not really a barbershop, I don't guess. Uh, that's just my term. But if, I guess if I'd gone to one and they were playing, you know, some classical music, which I actually like classical music, but if they were playing something that just didn't have a real appeal to me, I wouldn't even thought about it. Oh, but I heard that. I said, I haven't heard that one in a long time. It must have been Bob Dylan Day or something. I don't know what it was. But they played two or three songs. And all of a sudden, that old man's opinions start to jump up. And we're not exempt from that. Nobody's exempt from that. We're going to have to deal with that as long as we're here. Amen. But I will tell you this. truth greater than opinion. Yes. Truth's greater. Amen. And so it tells us, in the, and we'll, look, we'll go back and look at these verses in just a minute in, in Psalm 19. But it tells us some things that we, ha we really do need to understand about the truth. It's, it talks about this man that built his house on the sand. It came to pass when Jesus was into these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. You know why they were astonished at his doctrine? He was telling them something they never thought about. He was giving them another way other than their opinion. When you're talking about building houses, okay? Uh, do you know how to build a house? Okay. You know how to build a house? I'm going to ask him. Okay? If I'm getting ready to build a house, I'm sorry, but I'm not really going to confide in you. All right? I'm going to confide in him. Why? Because he does know what's right about building a house. All right, I'm, I, want, I need to build my life. Who am I going to confide in? My opinion? Am I going to have a conversation with myself because I want good advice? Like that t-shirt said? No. I need to look at something higher than I am. I'm going to build my life. It's going to have to be God. It's going to have to be the Word of God. The truth that's there. They were astonished at His doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority Amen. and not as the scribes. You see, what the Pharisees and the scribes did was they interjected their own opinion. Isn't it interesting the Pharisees were not satisfied with what God had said? They had to add to it. How do you, why, why would you add to something? That's perfect. Because you think it needs something else. Because that's your opinion. It didn't set well with the way you really think. And in order for you to feed your pride, which is the Pharisees' problem, they had to add to these things which always made them look better, supposedly. And in some ways, we're Pharisees. Because we really want ourselves to look better. And if we think we can, you know 
add this or throw this in or maybe even kind of discard that to where I can look better, we'll do that. But the Bible's telling us that that's building your life on the sand. It's faulty, and it's, going, it's not going to turn out right. So, Psalm 19, go back and look there if you would. It establishes a standard of truth, and it unashamedly declares it to you. Listen to how it describes this truth. It says it's perfect, it's sure, it's right, it's pure, it's clean, and it's true and righteous all together. This standard can warn you against error because this standard is right. This standard is true. Uh, and if you keep it, the Bible says, you'll have great reward. Now, Malcolm Forbes says toys gives you great reward. And I, I'm sure he had a bunch of them when he died. He was extremely wealthy. I'm sure he bought a lot of stuff along the way. And he had a lot of stuff when he left. Now, was, uh, here's a truth. And he left his stuff behind. And all the wealth that he had can't buy one inch of heaven. Amen. Not one inch. But it could secure his place in hell. If wealth is your God, that wealth will secure you a place in hell. There's great reward, though, if you'll believe the truth, if you'll follow the truth. Uh, in, in verse 13 of, of Psalm 19, the Bible used the, word, used the word presumptuous. Now, that word literally means to be prideful or arrogant. Now, the idea of being presumptuous is this. I'm I'm right. What I want to do is right. The direction I'm going in is right. You can't tell me anything. In being presumptuous, it means to have, uh, as, I, as I was looking in my old dictionary that I love to look in, it was talking about the fact that it is confidence based on a false belief. There's never been anybody that couldn't be told something. I don't care how smart they are. You know, the, the, I, I looked at a, a list one time of those people in history who have had these great, you know, IQs and intellects and all that kind of thing. And, and they start like, it, uh, I think the list started at like 160 or something in an IQ. And it went all the way up to 240 or something that somebody had that. And how brilliantly, you know, intelligent they were. Do you reckon they felt like nobody could tell them anything? Probably. But the truth is, most of them were fools. Their whole opinion was based on themselves and their intelligence and what they could figure out and all these kind of things. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Most of them. Again, narrow and broad. Okay. Presumptuous. To be confident on a shaky foundation. I'll go back to my example a while ago. Uh, if I would let this lady be my architect and design my house, build it according to her plans, her ideas. When it was all said and done, I would have confidence in a shaky foundation. I would presume that what she told me was right. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to base my, my life on that. Y'all heard us talk about the, uh, uh, the church building in St. Lucia. The first time I ever went to the, to the church in St. Lucia was in 2000. 
And at that time, there was a wooden structure on the side of the mountain. And I walked in that building, and to me, I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an American. I'm accustomed to that, all right? I'm accustomed to a different type of building. These fellows back here looking at me, they probably remember that building, don't you? Yeah, okay. I walked in, and I walked through the building to the other side where there was this big window, and I looked out, and I'm, I'm looking out at the ocean. Absolutely beautiful, you know. But it's like I felt the building do this. I told Sammy, I said, I'm preaching from over there. And I went as close to the door as I could get and said, I'm going to preach from here. And you say, well, what was your idea? Because if I saw that thing going, I was going to try to jump out the door into the parking lot, hoping it would stay. I mean, it just did not look very sound. I didn't have any confidence in that building. I really didn't. Although, I must have had some because I stayed in it. I taught Sunday school that morning. I preached that morning. You know what? My opinion actually changed enough to where I stayed in it. But kind of like some people I've heard talk about flying in a plane, and they said that they don't want to sit too hard. <laughs> I felt like I wanted to walk real light in that building. Oh, that's crazy. You know. But see, what's so sad is people have this, this tremendous confidence in something that's wrong. And that's what they base their life on. And it, it doesn't turn out well. It doesn't turn out well. There, there was a need, by the way, to take that building down and put another one up. And now there's a concrete building there. Now, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you now. You look at that concrete building. If there was a building inspector from America to go down there and look at that building, he would have a heart attack. Ray would have a heart attack. Probably just looking at that building. But it seems to be pretty strong. I hope so. It's four stories high. They went down to the bottom of the mountain and built it up. And now they're finishing the final top floor. Hallelujah. They think we're going to be able to, to preach and teach in the upstairs in the November conference for the first time ever. Looking forward to that. Uh, but think about the confidence. What do you have confidence in? The majority of people in the world have confidence in their opinion. Unless your opinion lines up with God, your opinion shouldn't, you should have no confidence in your opinion. All right, the Bible says, that the plea here is to don't let the, these things have dominion over me. God says that His truth should be our standard, and, he, and we need to be kept away from this self, you know, exaltation that we're right and everybody else is wrong. In verse 14, it says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. In other words, let it be about you. I heard this years ago, still sticks with me. The higher you put God in your life, the lower you have to put yourself. But the higher you put Him and the lower you put yourself, the closer you get together. See, we have way too high opinion of ourselves. And as long as we have that, we'll base our lives on our own thinking, our own opinion, and God will not be the, have this rightful place in our lives. He's God no matter what we believe. He's right no matter what we believe. He's King of kings and Lord of lords no matter what we believe. Yeah. But if we're going to be what God wants us to be, we have to believe that. I, that has to be our opinion. Let it be about Him. Uh, our life should be about Him. His truth over our opinion. Let me submit my opinion to your truth. Uh, I mean, listen, we're Baptists. We believe that the Bible is the final authority in faith and practice. The Bible is not your opinion. Amen. It's God's truth. Yeah. And if that's the final authority, then you're saying that that has to override my opinion. I need to line up with what God says. Have you noticed the debates in the realm of denominationalism in our day? 
what's going on. They're arguing over things that were once settled in the churches, but they no longer seem to be settled. Why? Let me ask you, who unsettled it? Did God unsettle it? Did God change His mind? Or has man just degenerated? I think man's degenerate. Uh, can, can man really unsettle the truth by his opinions? The answer that's no, but we can live by our own opinions. Mark chapter 7 and verse 13 says, Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition. Notice it's your tradition. Not the traditions that's been passed on by God through His Word. That's not what it's talking about. It's your traditions, our traditions, which you have delivered, and, and many such like things do you. Your tradition means it came from man and not from God, and it's a declaration of what saith man instead of what saith the Lord. And right now, there are a lot of churches that are being controlled by man's opinion. They're even though they would never say this out loud. Well, I really don't care what the Bible says. This is what I believe. They're doing that. They're doing that. Oh, we're going we're to accept this because it's the right thing to do in the day in which we live. So God changed His mind. God's not a pope. God's God. Because of man's traditions, man gravitated toward the opinion rather than truth. Therefore, we have all this friction, and we have all this division, and we have all these splinters, and we have all these wedges that are fearing. Uh, they're just they're they're fearful, and they're just tearing us apart. I told Nancy this morning. I said I, I was thinking about this since I studied those T-shirts. Maybe we ought to print a T-shirt. And have it like this. Truth settles issues. You ever heard somebody say, I got issues? Truth settles issues. You got some opinion other than truth will settle that. Truth settles issues. Now, give me two more minutes. John 17, 17 says this. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. To sanctify means to be made holy, to purify, to concentrate, to set up, uh, consecrate, to set apart, to be dedicated and devoted to the service and worship of God. And a part of sanctification is to set you apart from your opinion. As long as you're hanging in there with your opinion, it's going to control you. And we need to be set apart from that. Uh, how do we do that? Well, it says through thy truth. Very simple thing. I, I believe you ought to teach somebody when they first get saved. Saturate yourself with the Word of God. Saturate yourself with the Word of God. And by the way, if, you, if you're here this morning and you've been saved 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, keep on saturating yourself with the Word of God. Because I promise you, you still have an opinion. And it still wants to rear its head. And it still wants to have the preeminence. But you have to fight it back. And I believe the truth does that. The truth sanctifies, it says us, it sets us apart. Truth settles the argument of our opinions. And you might, I mean, listen, you may still hold on to your opinion, but truth settles what's right. God is truth, His Word is truth, in Him is no darkness at all. There's no error or compromise in Him. Uh, this got brought up quite often the other night when we were at the, at the men's meeting uh, because I made the statement, these are two words I just absolutely despise. I hate them. Uh, uh, one of them is compromise, and the other word is speculation. I hate speculation, and I hate compromise. And by the way, God hates compromise. So, let me ask you, if you mix God's truth with your opinion, what do you have? You have your opinion. That's all you have at that point. That's all that you're going to listen to. And that is compromise. Now, we don't need to compromise with the truth. The truth makes you free. Not a mixture of things makes you free. The truth makes you free. 
and the idea of speculating. Speculating says, this is what I, well, the Bible calls it private interpretation. This is what I believe the Bible means. Well, God knows what he said and says what he meant, and we need to find out what that is. Not speculating. We need to find out what does it mean. And we need, we need to go that way. So, what should you get out of this? You opinionated people. That our opinion naturally gravitates away from God. Don't be pointing at your wife. <laughs> our, our opinions automatically gra gravitate Amen. away from God. Amen. But we don't have to be that way. Truth can override that if we'll, ble if we'll believe the truth. You've got to saturate yourself with the truth. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the uh, opportunity uh, to have this class and, and to be a part of this. I thank you, Lord, for this really a great privilege and hope something that's been said that can be a help. Uh, we pray, Lord, for the uh, 11 o'clock service and it's just, just meet with us in a very special way. And, uh, Lord, uh, uh, draw us to you because you are the truth. You are the way. You're the life. And we need to build our lives on you. Uh, for us in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Thank you. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.